All right, here we are. We're recording and welcome to the Thursday night call. Um, I need to share my screen. Um, can I shout out our homegirl, Tyler, for being the only face on this board? You guys, it is July 9th. I'm, this is the one time I'm going to say it. Time to start moving, guys. July 9th, and we've only got one face on this board. We need to um, definitely start, start moving towards our goals because if you wait, it's going to be the end of the month, and you're going to be scrounging. No one likes to wait till the end of the month. Um, also, next week is summit week, so you're going to be pretty busy watching summit trainings and stuff like that. Hopefully, they light you up and you get on fire from it, but um, don't wait till the end of the month. Let's get moving. All right, some announcements. New coaches, let's definitely be taking notes on all these dates, okay? Um, I'm going to try to mute everyone real quick. Can you all mute yourselves if you're not muted just to make sure that it's um, like everybody can hear me. Okay. Um, all right. St. Louis, Missouri is summit 2021. They will announce this next week. Sorry. I'm totally blowing the excitement out of the water, but I want, I, I saw this, it was a leaked thing. We're not supposed to know this yet. So don't post about it until next week, but it is July 14th to the 18th in St. Louis. We've already booked one house. We will book another house as soon as we have 10 people committed to the next list. These are all the people that have committed and have paid for their spot in the house. And we will book another house when we get there. All right, this, you guys, summer flash sale. Okay, let me explain this. This is going to go from 6 p.m. tomorrow night um, to July 12th, which is Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern times. All right, I'm gonna stop and just explain this for a second. New coaches. What the heck is a flash sale? A flash sale is something specifically put on by us. You can choose to participate in it or you can choose not to. The way that it works is we offer packages, challenge packs, products. We put bundles together of products and we offer them at a discount. So we can't actually discount our products. We don't have any physical way of doing that. So what we do is we go and offer a gift card with it. So if someone purchases a um, annual bod challenge pack for $160. We might offer a $25 Amazon gift card back. Okay. So that's an incentive to get them going. Cause they're like, Oh my gosh, I get $25 back. Yes, I'll do it now. So you invite all those people who have said no because of price or no, because of whatever reason you invite all those people to join the flash sale, get them in, get them rolling. You get a $50 commission on that and you're giving 25. So you're still making money. Um, but you, you are responsible for that gift card. Does that make sense? Everybody get what that means? What we, when we do these challenge groups or when we do these flash sales, um, we, we bundle the products and stuff such as Energize, Recover, Hydrate, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to mute who is ever, there we go. Um, so when we bundle these products, make sure you put them on home direct, auto shipment. Okay. So if we do, if we do energize, hydrate and recover, and that's a bundle, make sure all three of those items are on auto shipment because otherwise you don't get success club points. We may, we bundle them so that you get success club points, but they have to be on auto shipment for you to get success club points. In the past, a lot of people do one-time shipment or someone will say, I don't want auto shipment. You just tell them no problem. As soon as you get your order, we can cancel it, but this is how we have to set it up for you to get the discount. Okay, so highly recommend that for getting those points and such. Um, but that's gonna run from tomorrow until Sunday. And tomorrow during the day, we will post in the team page, the group where you can invite all your people. We'll post some invite scripts that you can send to all your people. We'll post some stories that you can share in your stories to get people to join. You can post about it um, starting anytime now. You can say, we've got a summer flash sale going on. I'll post this image that I created in the team page so you'll have all of that. But um, I definitely highly suggest, especially new coaches, utilizing that as a tool to lift your business off the ground. Everyone should be able to hit Success Club this, this weekend if we all are using this flash sale. So push into that. Talk to, if you have already been talking to people and people are like, no, not right now, whatever, I can't, can't afford it. Now's the time to go back and be like, hey, girl, I wanted to let you know that we have a flash sale going on. Cheapest way to get involved. We've got this new program. We're going to include MBF in this, guys. And the only way they can do MBF is if they sign up as a coach. So you're going to start building your teams this weekend and such, okay? So 
That'll all be posted in the team page tomorrow. I know that's a lot. If you're a new coach and you're like, what the fuck, message your coach and we will walk you through it, okay? It's not that scary. So, all right, sharing my screen again. Diamond Retreat. I don't know who else is excited about this, but I am freaking pumped about this. We are booking our house next weekend. So Diamond Retreat is September 10th through the 13th in the mountains of Tennessee slash North Carolina, somewhere in that border. And we will have a house next weekend. Uh, we will book the house next weekend. Everyone that will be invited has to be Diamond Thursday. They have to wake up Diamond Thursday and you will get a personal invite from us to join us at this retreat. This retreat is going to be amazing. Okay. It is going to be everything you've ever dreamed of a retreat being, this is what it will be. I'm so excited. It's going to be a very small group, intimate group of leaders. We're going to do some leadership development and we're also going to freaking party. Okay. It's going to be a good time. So girls weekend, all the, all the trips, all the fun travel. And remember all that travel cash you guys can earn by hitting success club. So don't be like, I can't afford all this. Yes, you can hit success club, get some success club points. You can get travel cash girls weekend. 2021, May 19th to the 23rd of next year. I know that's way out there. This was our house for summit this year in New Orleans that got canceled and they wouldn't refund us. So they gave us the house for a different date. So we pushed it out as far as we can to make sure it's as safe as possible to go next year, May 19th through the 23rd. There are no stipulations. You don't have to be a certain rank or a certain level or anything like that. It is a girls weekend. It's going to be shopping and hanging out and exploring New Orleans and going out, eating, um, taking all the pictures so that you have pictures for your business, all the things. Um, it's $250 per person from the 19th to the 23rd. There will be groceries delivered to the houses. So there will be food in the houses. Won't be all your food that you need, I'm sure, but there'll be plenty of food in the houses and um, lots of other surprises that I will coordinate between now and then. So if you want to go, you just need to let me know and we'll get your name on the list. All right. Any questions about all that, all that stuff? If you have to choose between girls trip and summit, it's summit just so you guys know. Okay. If you have to choose between the girls trip in new Orleans or summit in St. Louis, it's summit. Summit is going to do so much for your business. It is something every coach needs to experience. Um, girl's trip is just a fun weekend getaway. If you need to get the hell out of Dodge, any questions so far? All right. Now we're going to jump into the meat and potatoes of this call. Make sure you guys have your notebooks ready and I will be asking leaders on the team to kind of unmute themselves. If they have something they want to chime in with, just feel free. Um, diamonds and wildflowers. We've kind of all talked about this. So if you guys want to unmute yourselves during this, please feel free. So tips for new coaches. What I wish I knew then the things that I wish I would have known in the beginning of my business or other coaches on this team, wish they would have known in the beginning of their business. We're going to kind of go over some of those things um, so that you guys can learn from our mistakes, right? Or learn from the things we've learned along the way. There is never a good time ever. There's not. There's never a good time to start a fitness program. There's never a good time to get on track with your nutrition. There's never a good time to uh, become a coach. I mean, we're in a freaking pandemic. There's never gonna be the perfect time, right? Um, someone just joined. Can you meet yourself? Thank you. Um, so. There's never going to be a good time. So you need to just put everything aside and realize why are you doing this? Your reason to want to change has to be bigger than the reason you want to stay the same. Okay. You have to realize why you want to be a coach. What are you working for? And then you have to think is now a good time is now the time that I can like, is there going to be a better time? There's probably not going to be a better time. And if there is, Int, I don't, I don't even know where I'm going with this, but um, I got nothing. I don't remember where I was going with that. Sorry, my, I heard my baby crying. So I'm gonna have to get her in a second. Um, all right, take action to do the things on your own. This is number one key here, okay? 
every single coach, please listen to this and listen to it again. Take action to do things on your own. Don't wait for your coach to tell you what to do. Don't wait for someone to explain something. If you have a question, go figure out the answer. If you have, so for example, I don't know how to get more followers on Instagram. Google it. How do I get more followers on Instagram? I don't know what program is good for people who have bad knees. Get in your online office and learn the programs. Learn there's all the learning materials in your online office. You have to take the action to do things on your own. If you're waiting for us to tell you what to do, you're always going to be a sheep. Okay. Who here wants to be a sheep? Do you want to be a follower or do you want to be the leader? You want to have a team. You want to have a team who is leading a team of leaders, right? You want to have people who are doing things without you having to tell them what to do. So be one of those people who will go out and do what you tell them to do. Um, I'm reading a book right now that is like blowing my mind. Personal development. If you guys don't have an awesome book right now, message your coach and we'll figure out a great book for where you are. But the book I'm reading right now explains everything in like layman's terms with this business take action so the top 20 percent of your business is creating 80 percent of your income your top 20 performers on your teams are creating 80 percent of your income and he explained it that he used some very generic numbers but 240 dollars an hour when you spend time with that top 20 percent or 14 dollars per hour when you spend the time with the lower 80%. The lower 80% is people who are waiting for you to take action. The top 20% are the people who are doing things, not even requesting your time, but they deserve your time. All of you think of it that way. If you are asking your coach for time, you better be doing the things. Okay. That is the most a respectful thing to do for your coach because you're going to sign coaches. You're going to build a team. You want your team to be listening to you and then doing the things without you having to follow up and babysit them and everything else, right? So this is my really tough love saying, if you're coming to these calls, be the one who's taking action. I have to grab my baby because she could stand up and flip out of her bed because I haven't lowered the mattress. So hold on, I'll be right back. Hey, Tyler. Yeah. Tyler, um, Abigail and Wilder are never allowed to hang out ever again. She was just standing in her bed and my heart is pounding. <sighs> um, my child painted his entire crib and himself with shit today. So he might have gotten that for worship, I might just be selling him. <laughs> oh my gosh, my heart is pounding. She was literally standing in her bed, like over top. And I didn't lower the mattress yet. Time to lower the mattress. Right after this call, that's happening. She's even, she even scared herself. Okay. So tough love, do the things, okay? Do the things. Don't be waiting for your coach to take action or tell you to take action. This one is huge. This one is so huge. Not every coach that joins is going to be a runner and that's okay. But surround yourself with people who are better than you. Okay. If you're coming into this and you're like, I, I got partnered with someone and they're not doing the things you're not going to do the things. So find a new partner, find someone who's going to run with you and push you to your goals. It's okay. You can still be friends with that person, but find a partner that's going to help push you to your goals, to run with you, to be, you want someone who- How do you not know your computer password? Somebody's not muted. <laughs> um, so Find someone, surround yourself with people who are better than you. I think that that is so important in this business to continue um, building partnerships, to continue like building little pods and teams and stuff like that. But you learn so much from each other, but your vibes matter. Whatever's going on in the group is going, you're going to be sucked into it. So if you have a group of duds, you're going to be dragged down. If you've got a people that are running and pushing and pushing for big goals, you're going to run and push too. Okay. And the, it, 
is contagious. The excitement of this business can be contagious. All right, this one. This is like an actionable item for you guys. Post, 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 post. You guys should be posting. So she's like, what are you doing, mom? Consistently. Get consistent with your posting. You should be showing up on social media every single day. I say one to three times a day. And I say one, uh, I, I lean towards the three. Personally, I post a fitness or, or nutrition post every day, a life post, and an invite post. Sometimes more than one life post. I had two life posts today. Um, but the reason I say more than once a day, because you need to be showing up with your fitness every day. And if you're only posting once and you're only posting your fitness, your whole feed's going to be fitness. No one wants their life consumed by fitness, right? And if they think your life is all fitness, it's going to be a turnoff. If they see you're still going to the pool, you're still, going to the pool, you're still hanging out, then people are going to um, be more apt to be interested to do what you do. You could fit this fitness life into your normal life. Know what I mean? Um, so show your excitement in your posts. You need to show you are excited. You need to show that you, um, have energy, that your, your energy is contagious, that people see that you're happy. They are not going to be drawn to someone who is depressed, who is anxious all the time to someone who is like miserable, who is complaining. They're not going to be drawn to that. No one wants that life, right? So you need to show your excitement, your enthusiasm, your energy through your posts and pictures. That means that you can still talk about the crap and show that you're a real person, but you can twist everything. You never want to like leave a, like a post being like, I am manic depressive and someone help me. You need to be like, I wasn't feeling great. So I did this. You should try this. Always have a twist to your posts. If it's something that is a downer, does that make sense? Life happens. Husbands drive you nuts, but what did you do about it? If you're, if your husband's driving you so crazy that you're putting it on Facebook, you better have a reason you're putting it on Facebook, <laughs> like twist it to make it somehow you had a happy ending to that day. Make your pictures bright, make them cohesive so that all your pictures kind of look like they belong to you. They're branded to you. Um, presets are great. You can get a preset for like $3 on Etsy. Um, take time to take a good picture. Don't just post a shit picture to post a picture, okay? Take the time. Usually this kind of a selfie is a turnoff for most people on social media. Prop your phone up. I'm showing you how I prop my phone up on things. See my phone right here? Prop it up on something. Use the self-facing camera and use the timer. Step away from the camera, use different angles. You notice that all these pictures are different angles. They're not like, Selfie, 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 selfie. They're not workout, 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 workout. It's not all kids. It's a real good variety of things. Um, you want to make sure you're showing a variety of your life, your family, your kids, your whatever you, makes you, you. Um, Can I chime in really fast? Yeah, girl. The, when you um, prop up your phone, if you find that your self-facing camera selfies are grainy, flip your camera around. Yeah, use the other And camera. use your timer and then it blinks at you. Yep. That's a good point. The other, the normal camera on your phone is much better quality than your forward facing camera. Also a quick and tip. windows. That's what I was about to say. Also, if you have a window with light behind you, you're going to be dark. Put your phone in the window and you'll have natural lighting and it'll be so much better. Turn off your overhead lights and just use your forward or just use your light from the uh, window and face the window. Can I make a point? Yeah. Clean up the clutter. Yes. Around your area. Even if you just kick it to the side or throw it on your bed, whatever you need to do, move it so that it's not in your photo. Put it back after your photo. Who cares? But <laughs> so, or crop your it so photo. it's not in your picture. And I'll say that too. When you're working out, I see a lot of people working out in their living room and such. Fold the blankets, put, put the pillows back on the couch put it together so that it looks decent because you have to think you are attracting people are people and you're competing against every other coach on this team and every other coach in this network. Is someone going to want to join you in your dumpster living room or is someone want to going to be more likely to join you? If, Hey, she looks like she's got her life put together. Look at her probably more 
impressed by the girl who can work out and still have her life together, right? Um, clearly none of us really do. We do it for the photo, but um, definitely clean up your space. Good point. Very good point. Mm. Same with food. Food pictures look better on a real plate than a, a paper plate. Just saying. Most people are going to be like, that looks so much better on a real plate. <laughs> Um, even though I serve my family on paper plates on the nightly. <laughs> okay. Um, your posts, when you're posting, they need to be on target. Address the problems that your people are having. I don't have time. I don't have money. I don't have friends. I don't have support. Your posts should speak right to that. You're going to get so much engagement and you're going to be talking to your market when you actually address the problems. So... I don't fit into any of my clothes. I will not take my shirt off at the beach. I, I don't play with my kids because I don't have energy. Those are types of things that are real issues for other women. And if you're addressing those issues and how you're combating them, they're going to be real impressed. And make sure it's not all fitness, okay? Oh, okay. Make sure you're sharing all areas of your life so other moms and other women relate to you. So if you're not a mom, obviously you don't have to talk about moms and that way you don't attract moms. But if you are, talk about your kids, talk about your husband, talk about your messy house, talk about how many loads of laundry you did today. People are going to relate to that. And if you ask questions in your posts, like uh, who can relate or can I get an amen? Those usually get a ton of engagement. Um, stop pushing the share button, guys. That little share button to share that really stupid meme about the political campaign going on, don't do it. Delete those things off your page. When people come to your page, they want to see your face, your family, your pictures, your words, okay? If you look at any top coach in this business, they, their whole feed is their content. No one's going to their page and being like, oh, what funny memes did they share today? No, they want to know what are they doing? What's going on? What are they talking about? What are they recommending today? What, what tips do they have for me today? They're getting value from those pages. And you, part of your daily task is to friend request people, right? If you're friend requesting someone or someone friend requests you, okay, Someone friend requests you and their whole page is a whole bunch of tasty videos and memes and all this stuff. You know nothing about this person. Are you going to accept them? No, right? But someone friend requests you and she's a mom and she's got cute kids and she's sharing recipes and she's giving tips on how to make their baby sleep at night. You're going to accept that person, right? You're going to be like, oh, hell yes. Give me all the things. So that's what you need to remember is when someone comes to your page, are they going to accept your friend request? Would they want to be your friend? Alrighty. Invite, 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 invite. You're going to be learning how to do this in your coach training if you are a brand new coach. This is something you need to be uber ridiculous consistent with is inviting. Inviting is one of the four vital behaviors in this business. Posting on social media all day long is great. But if you're not sending the private invite, people are never going to come to your party. Let's back that up. I'm having this crazy, awesome weekend next weekend, guys, and I've got coaches coming, and it's going to be so fun, and everyone should come. Who's coming? If I don't send you a personal invite, you're probably not going to be like, oh, she wants me at her house for the weekend, right? <laughs> so that is, and not that I don't want you all at my house, by the way, I just only have in one spare bedroom, <laughs> but um, the... The point is, if you are not sending that personal invite, they don't know you're talking to them. So you need to be sending the personal invites being like, hey, girl, I don't know if you saw my post, but I think you would love this. Make sense? All right. Invite, invite, invite. That should be your first. That's on every one of my trackers. I still, have, I still follow a tracker every single day, and it's the first thing we do. First thing we do because the rest is easy then. Invites are the most time-consuming. They're the bulk of your business. Do those first. All right. The processes. I don't even know if that's a word, but processes. Sign a new customer. What do you do with a new customer? When you sign a new customer, you need to first figure out what their fitness goals are. You need to figure out what their fitness goals are. Help them choose a program that's based off of their fitness goals. Help them create a hard copy meal plan. 
Why do I say hard copy? Because if they have a plan in front of them on paper, they're much more likely to do it, okay? Help them create a meal plan. Maybe that's just giving them an already done meal plan, or maybe it's taking the time. Baby for sale, she's only five cents. Who do you wanna go live with? Who wants her? Who wants her? Charlie gonna I'll take her, I'll trade you stuff. Charlie gonna take you. Let's trade. Oh. Oh, I shouldn't like that. Um, help them create a hard copy of a meal plan and make sure they understand their nutrition program. Whatever nutrition program they're doing, just make sure they understand it so that way they can get results. Because the whole reason we're doing this is to get people results, right? There's, we get no joy in people joining our groups and not getting results. We get no joy in coaches joining and not seeing success in their business. Add them to the sweat squad. Encourage them to share their before photos with you or the group and check in with them weekly or biweekly. That is the process for customers. You want to make sure you're staying in contact with your customers, helping them, um, however that looks. As you get more, you could create a little message thread with all your customers if you want to. Um, however that looks for you, just to make sure you're staying in contact with them. What do you do if you sign a new coach? All of the same things you did with a customer. And then you add them to the team page. You send them the link to the training. And then hold them accountable to the training. I'm giving you guys a little bit of a break here, though. It's not your job for them to work. When a coach signs up, we give them everything they need. And this is for you guys, too. We give, we give, you, we give you everything you need. If you're not going to do it or they're not going to do it, it's not on you. It's on them. They have to want it. They have to do it, just like the fitness programs. If they're not going to do it, we can't make them do it. Okay, we're giving them all of the resources. We're giving coaches all of the resources. They have to do it. Tell them to join these team calls. Team calls are every Thursday, not next week because of Summit. Um, every Thursday at eight o'clock, team calls right here. We have different training topics every week. We cater to newer coaches every week. So we make sure that everything we're talking about is relevant um, and will help you grow your business. And then explain to them, like I'm explaining to you guys, the business success lies in the hands of yourself. They have, you have to be willing to work. They have to be willing to work and you have to be in contact with them. Stay in contact with your new coaches and be there ready to answer questions. But you guys stay in contact with your coaches. If you have questions, you need help. You need to be reaching out to your upline. Don't sit there being like, I'm overwhelmed. Overwhelmed is a choice. Stop and reach out to your coach if you have questions. Um, reach out to your success partner. Reach out to someone else in this team. This whole team is behind you. We all want to see each other succeed. Live and breathe it. If you are sticking to the nutrition program, you are sticking to your workouts, you are plugging into the team, you are participating in team calls, you're joining the Zoom workouts, you are doing power hours with the team, you're plugging in, you will have content for dates. You will have things to talk about. You will love this. You will talk about it to all your friends. You will say, everyone needs to do this because it is contagious. It is something that you guys will fall in love with if you let it consume you. Um, I don't think that there's a coach on here who has been coaching for a while who will say that like, eh, it's okay. Every coach here is like, I will never leave you people. Like if you leave me, I will cry. Um, so you've got to like dive into it though. Um, I use this example. I have lots of metaphors and examples. It's really annoying, especially when you've heard them 55 times, but I used to be a girl scout leader. There was this one little girl who would come every once in a while. And she always felt like she didn't have any friends. They didn't know who she was. She had to come every week, like the rest of the girls. So she felt like she fit in, but she didn't same thing with you guys, guys. If you're not coming, you're not showing up, people don't know who you are, so you are going to feel left out. And it's not intentional, but you just won't feel like, like you have any inside jokes or know who these people are or anything like that if you're not coming to the things and doing the things. So make sure you plug in and participate. Introvert or not, we all get you out of all that stuff. It'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> all right. That's what I've got. Tyler, what else do you want to throw in here? to find my mute button um 
plugging in is super important. That's like my biggest, that's the biggest thing that I'm ever going to tell any coach ever. I, I will legitimately tell you for the two months that I drove back and forth to Rochester and could not be a part of any team, anything because I was at work. I fell out of a loop. I felt left out. I felt like garbage. I did not feel like I was on a team and it felt like trash. And then as soon as I was able to actually actively be a part of team calls again and actively be able to participate, instant turnaround. My success club numbers skyrocketed because I wanted to do things and I wanted to be a part of the team and do personal development. It's non-negotiable. Just do it. You're going to think it's stupid until you get into a habit and then do it. You're going to want to do it. It's all choice for sure. It's all choice. And you have to want it. Like who here struggled for a long time starting their own fitness journey? It was like, it was something click though. And you're like, I need to do something, right? That's how this business is going to be for you too. If you don't have, if you're not all in, this business can be one of two things, really fucking awesome, or it can be a hobby and it can suck your money. You've got to treat it like a job because if you treat it like a hobby, you're never going to show people your consistency and build that trust with people. If you're like in and you're out, you're in and you're out, no one's going to believe that you're going to be able to be there to help them. This isn't selling someone a lipstick. This is selling someone a coach. Okay. So it's so important. Consistency is so important in this business. Um, what you want? Who you want to talk to? Who? Who is it you want to talk to? Who? Which one? Yeah, all of them. Can you say hi? Um, you've just got to be super, super consistent with this business. Um she's really distracting and every child I'm pretty sure I got dumber with and she, I just mush brain is mush and she's so excited that Wilder's coming to see her <laughs> Wilder's coming and Charlie's bringing her baby now too Eliza's coming get a routine even if it's like a half-ass routine get a routine it will help you immensely and even if you are only working in pockets of your day, some days my kid decides to paint his entire crib in shit and we do midday baths and I've got laundry getting rained on because where did rain even come from? You still get work done in pockets. If you have five minutes while you're shitting, whatever. And you, how many invites can you get out in 10 minutes? I went from you a five minute shit to, to a 10 minute shit. Look at it. I started <laughs> taking Wilder to the bathroom with me with a toy and putting him on the floor because he climbed everything. He knocked over a baby gate today and tried to scale it like a mountain. Like this is not an exaggeration. You just it make really it work. Quickly. You figure it out. Your phone is with you all the time anyway because you're taking 9 million pictures of your kid or your dog or whatever. Figure it out. Put it in a pocket somewhere. And I really recommend everyone work from a list. Get a tracker. Make a list. Maybe you make your own list. So this is my tracker that I use and I just printed it out when I got home from my vacation. But So I'm on day two and I'm really excited that I'm sticking with it. But um, my goal is every single box for the whole month. But I include everything on there. I include um, the posts that I want to post. I include one-on-one -on -one time with my husband. I include one-on-one -on -one time with my kids. I include making beds and laundry and dishes and vacuuming. I include everything on there because my life needs to be in balance, right? Everyone here is probably like, I don't have time to do all this. What do you need to get done every day? What are the things you need to get done every day? Put everything on one list rather than having 25 lists put everything on one list and then you can get it all done make sense yes marcy if you need a tracker search tracker in our team page there's hundreds you can find one that works for you i switch my tracker up all the time because i get bored but i'm sticking with this one for 30 days taylor tp I was going to say something. So I was going to say, what were we just talking about? Inviting. So, um, 
sometimes I feel like people are like, well, I'm not really sure who else to invite. Like, I feel like I've invited people or I, I don't know where to, to get more people to invite from. So like, it goes back to consistently being posting because three times a day, there should be people liking your posts. And if literally no one is ever liking any of your posts, ever commenting on any of your posts, not even one person, maybe talk to your coach and evaluate what your posts are looking like so that you can maybe get something that's going to be a little bit more engaging. Um, even if it's like, sometimes you're like, I need to um, find some new decor for my office or my whatever. Anybody have any place that they would suggest? Because even though that has nothing to do with coaching, it has to do with life. People love giving their opinions and you're going to get a bunch of comments and it's going to make your posts start showing up to more people. So um, you always should have something to invite to your Instagram stories, everybody who's watching them, your Facebook stories, everybody who's watching them, put polls and like things to engage with in those so that even if they accidentally click, they're still clicking and you can be like, Hey, I saw you voted on my poll. It starts a conversation. Um, so you should never, ever, ever run out of people to invite. You should always have somebody to invite you. And that's like just warm invites. So that's not even cold invites on top of the fact that you're adding more people on a daily basis. You're making more friends. You're starting more conversations. I just want to throw my two cents in there. Ooh, I want to share this. This is for all you new coaches. I used to share this all the time. I think I even had it. In, oh, are you kidding? Do I have it? I'm going to use a marker. Um, Okay, so when you first sign, I have a, a chart, okay? This is a chart. When you first sign up as a coach, you have way up here, this is your warm market. All the people who know and love you, okay? You've got a ton of them. You've got 15 people, people love you. 15 people love you in this world. So as you um, invite all of those people, that goes down, right? You invite them, they say no, they say yes, they whatever, but you go through all those people. On day one, you have zero cold market. Nobody that you don't know on your friends list, you know everybody. So on day one, you should be friend requesting new people, finding new people to talk to, so that by the time you are, okay, there's a child up here, a baby up here, Finn, over here, talk to your kids. Well, I will be down in a minute. Um, so when you have your cold market and you start building your cold market and you're starting creating conversations with people you don't know, by the time your warm market is running out, your cold market is increasing. So that way you never run out of people to talk to. Does that make sense? That's why you want to start now talking to people and friend requesting people that you don't know, F following new people, friending new people and creating a bigger audience for yourself. Um, if you guys think about it, where you came from, it's probably not the warm market of your coach, right? It's probably like a weird message on Facebook or Instagram. Um, so you have to think about the fact that they have been building out their markets to get you where you are. New coaches. I would love to hear from some of the new coaches. What questions do you guys have starting off your businesses? I will call on people. I'll do it. So please unmute yourself or put it. Questions. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, when you guys started did you use the personal Instagram accounts you'd already had for years and years and years? Yes. Okay. Um, do you, so like, I feel like I wanted to focus on one thing, but then I also know that my Instagram tends to get political and includes like my personal like views and values on things. And I don't want to like mix the two. So is it like, is it going to work if I create a new Instagram where I can be public versus having an Instagram that's, I keep my personal Instagram private. So I make my, I made mine public. So the, okay. let's talk about that for a second. I encourage everyone to make your profiles public. Let's like digest that for a second. I don't post where I am. I don't post what school my kids go to. I don't post the doctors we go to. I don't post anything like that. I don't post concerts when I'm there. I post everything after the fact so that it's safe. You know what I mean? I make, I make sure I'm making safe decisions on social media, as you should if your profile is public or private. 
regardless. I don't post inappropriate pictures of my kids. I don't post anything that could cause harm. Also, if you were to create new accounts, people will see that. They will see through that. They're going to be like, she has an account. So this is clearly a sales account and they're going to not be interested. You know what I mean? Like when you make a whole new account for sales, it's salesy. That's in my opinion. So if you just show how whatever your life looks like and how you can fit coaching and fitness into your already established life, that's what other people are going to relate to. If you have a, if you have political views and that's your thing, like you're into that, I'm not into that. Like I am not into, like, I don't like controversial, like con, con, I don't like whatever the controversial issues, whatever that word is that I'm looking for right now. I don't like, yes. I don't like confrontation. I was putting those two together. I don't like confrontation. Like it's not my thing, but if that's your thing, that's fine. That can be your brand. I mean, you could be the, like the Trump coach. I don't know, like whoever you're in for, but you could do whatever you want. Um, but whatever your views are, if that's, if that's your thing and you're already invested and you're into that, you can include fitness in with that too. Okay. You're just going to, you're going to narrow your, your audience to whatever yeah. views are. But I guess the only other thing is I'm also a teacher. So I hesitate on making social media accounts public. You can not have your same name. And okay. I know that that's what other, so we have a lot, most, many, many, many top coaches are either teachers or were teachers in Beachbody. Teachers or nurses. So the two of them are like the top industry. Um, and a lot of them just changed their name somehow. So it was like first and middle name or something like that um, while they were teaching. So that was one option. Um, also, you can always not listen to me. I am not the rule maker, just so you guys know, or your coach. You don't have to listen to our advice. We give you our advice on what we think works and what has worked for us and what we've heard has worked for other people you might have a whole nother plan for yourself and that's fine. Um, last thing, your social media is your store. You all signed up as a coach. Your social media is now your store because you don't actually have a store. So you use social media for that platform, right? If you owned a baby boutique and you had all these cute decorations in there and people were walking in your store, you would say, hi, thanks for coming in. Can I help you with something, right? When people are liking your posts and watching your stories, that's them coming into your store. And that's your, up my, are we serious? That's my four-year-old in the jumper. Um, so that's people going into your store and that's you getting the opportunity to um, say, hi, can I help you with something? Are you interested in something? Can I, can I help you find a program that works for you? That's them walking into your store. Also, if people are coming in your store and they're not receptive to whatever you have to say, they're like baby haters and they're coming in your store, you're going to be like, please go away. <laughs> so if people are coming to you and they're like annoyed with your post, please go away. If they can't support you in whatever you're doing, you don't want them anyway, right? So you got to kind of have that tough skin and be like, oh, this post is annoying. Okay, bye. Like deuces. Un okay. Unfollow. Um, and we've all had many people that have done that. You just have to have the skin of a rhino. So many people have opinions on every, everything. I'm sure if you talk about political stuff, you already know that. <laughs> Great questions, Kim. Thank you. Anyone? That was really helpful, by the way. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Any other new coaches have questions? I have one. Yeah. Um, so if people sign up like under me, I just asked Whitney this actually, it looks like she's responding. Do they like, do I start my own accountability group or how does that work? The I add them. Squad is for everybody. Okay. Eventually you might want to, but we have found that we love being together. We have okay. like, we're like kind of attached to like the umbilical cord. We don't like so what, to talk about each other. What group would I add them to? The sweat squad. Okay. Write that down. Yeah, <laughs> yep, you're in there, right? I that's I don't think so. That's what I'm oh wanting to look oh, at. Make sure your coach adds you to the sweat squad. Who is your coach? Whitney. Whitney. I don't even know Whitney. This is so Man. fun having a team that is so 
like the team is exploding right now. Misty. Hey. Is this? Yep. Okay. Well, that's the challenge. That's the sweat squad oh. challenge. So that, that challenge is within the sweat squad. Okay. So you must be in the sweat squad to see that challenge. No? Maybe. I'll figure it out. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Where are you going? So I have a question. Yes. Hi. Um, hi. I was wondering when I was setting up my personal page, like the Beach Body site, in the sections it said um your like a bod group, like to set up like your your beach body on demand group. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to do that then because we're already part of a group. So the Beachbody On Demand groups show up when your challengers purchase Beachbody On Demand. There's a little link at the top that says my or bod groups, and then it'll show what groups is your coach running. I don't love bod groups. I'll be honest, and this is going on YouTube, so sorry, corporate, but I don't love them. But I do think it's important to have one there so that people can request to join it. And when they request to join it, you could plug them into the Facebook group. So we kind of like just use it as like a, a tool to get around. Does that make sense? So would it be like, so you would put like the link to, to the, our group? Nope. So it doesn't even let you do that. So it would, you would basically set up a bod group in a bod group. Do you even know what that is? No, that's what I was so confused on when I was setting it up. I'm like, all right, well, this is. <laughs> it's so Beachbody on demand has an accountability group feature where you can log your shakes, log your stuff, but there's so many like issues with it still. Cause they're still rolling it out. Um, that it doesn't have as good of engagement and easy access as Facebook does. So Facebook, we just have more of a natural flow to. So what you can do though, is you can create a bod group. And I encourage you all to do this. Create a bod group called the sweat squad. And you don't have to do anything with it. Just set it up and have it be an ongoing group. Don't do anything. Don't post anything in there. Don't accept anybody. Don't invite anyone to it. Just create it so it's there. So when people request to join it, you can, you'll get an email and it'll say, Chelsea requested to join your bod group. You can then email them back and be like, hey, girl, I saw you want to join the group. We've got this amazing Facebook group and get them in there. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. That's what I would recommend everybody do. Are we not doing the sweat squad? Hold on. I can't read the whole thing. Bod group anymore? Just want to read the groups that are on Insta, but not Facebook. You can run a group, Victoria. If you want to run a group on bod groups, go for it. The sweat squad bod group is there, but it's been so broken. I can't even accept people to join it. Yeah, I have my own um, group that is doing really well with my like challengers and everything and my um, couple coaches that I have. But I just feel like um, I can't. It's hard because I can't really offer the same um family type atmosphere like all of us girls really cheering each other on and everything because they're not on Facebook and I feel bad because I am saying like oh an accountability group with prizes and this and that and I'm it's just like me <laughs> so I just don't know um I'm kind of like caught in the middle of what I should do with my Instagram people tell them to create a Facebook just for the group just for the group yeah that. I did mention that but she was really still like, eh. but I guess it's up to them if they want to do that. Exactly. It's up to them. There's no difference of creating a Facebook profile or a Beachbody profile. Right. You know what I mean? It's the same thing. If you're not putting anything else out there, like just create it for that purpose. Um, and can you get just a profile just for messenger or do you have to have a Facebook? I don't know. As well. Google that one. I'm not sure. Google it. Okay. I'm not sure. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm looking in the chat box. Anybody else have questions? We got about five more minutes. I have one. Hi. Hi. So with our Instagram and everything, um, I read one at one point that you don't really want to show that like the Shakeology bag or the Energize. Is that still a thing where we're not supposed to show the beach body stuff and it's just like kind of there so they can come to you, but so. So would you prefer to see someone holding a Shakeology cup with a shake in it or a really cute cup with a straw and looking all fun and be like, what's in her cup? What is that? Or 
like a dessert or something like that? Well, see, me personally, I would do the shaker cup that says it so I know what it is, but that's just me. Okay. Also- so then my next question is, if you saw someone with a Shakeology cup and they looked amazing, would you go Google Shakeology and buy it yourself? I would ask them first, but, but I would be more. Yeah. Most people won't. So if you're putting all that out there, we call it curiosity marketing. So we take away the product names. We take away the product details. And then they're like, what are you doing when they see you having amazing results? So then you're having the conversation. They go through you. They can't go Google it and buy it without you. Well, I noticed my coach never posted it. So I never posted it. So I was just following her. And a lot of people came to me asking, but there's some times where I'm holding my cup and I knew um, other coaches like in the past years, I see their Instagram and Shakeology was all over it. And then all of a sudden it changed, but I haven't put anything out there because my coach hasn't, if that makes sense. I personally don't. I mean, I did. I used to when I was back in the day, like it was a thing and you like kissed your Shakeology cup and you're like doing all the things. Like no one does that anymore. Um, and we joke about that as coaches, like being like, don't kiss your Shakeology cup. Um, but mostly just because it looks annoying to some people, they're like, oh, another product, another person. You know what I mean? But if you put a little bit of thought into it and you make it like cute and fun, people are more interested and more likely to engage on your stuff. Also, Facebook is this really cool tool where if they see words, they can read that this says Shakeology in your picture. And they will not let your post get reached because they see products and they think you are sponsored posts or something like that without paying to sponsor your post. So we're with us and in my, and I just kept doing it. And they were saying like, you might be copyrighted. And I was like, so yeah, so that kind of stuff can happen too. So then people won't even see your posts. So I recommend not name dropping and not showing products and stuff like that. I don't say I'm doing 21 day fix or I'm on leg day of 21 day fix. I say today was leg day or I'm doing a new program next week. I can't wait. It's a muscle burning program or I never name drop. So that way people are like, what are you doing? Where are these results from? Because if yeah, they I, see yeah, the results. I have, so I figured that was a thing. I just wanted to be sure. Yep, so. that is a really good question. And just to piggyback onto this, if people ask you, you can tell them. Like, if they ask you in a private message and they're like, hey, I, like, I see you're doing this, like, what are you doing? You don't have to, like, keep it a secret. Because I, that has happened to me, not with Beachbody, but, like, it makes it seem like they're being shady and secretive. So, like, that's totally not what we're trying to do. It's not supposed to be, like, oh, I can't tell them what the program is because now they're going to go Google it. It's yeah. just, like, out there on social media, I don't ever say like my energize. I don't ever say like my recover. I say like my brownie batter for my muscle recovery or like my unicorn juice or my pre-workout or whatever. And then that way when people are like, okay, so what's this pre-workout you're drinking? I'm like, oh my gosh, you're going to be in love. I'm obsessed. Here's what it's all about. Like I totally get you hooked up with some. And if they're like, oh, what is it? I'm like, oh, it's called energize. Have you ever heard of it? Like just wanted to throw that out there because there has been a few times that I've asked someone like that's invited me to something. I'm like, Oh, what is it? And they won't tell me. And it was just really, really sketchy. So I never really want anybody to get that vibe from us. So I just wanted to say that. But in the comments, when someone's like, what program are you doing? You can say, I'll message you. That's what I do. That way more people keep asking. By that way. It's because they're curious. So yeah. Okay. Thanks. Of course. Good question. Anybody else? So this is like a, I guess, technical question. And maybe I'm just dumb and I can't figure it out. So in this like website builder thing, so it has you upload pictures. So I did that and it's crooked. Every time, it's like 90 degrees turned. So I've saved the picture. I, you know, like uh, edit it, rotate it, save it again, try to do it again. It, it just, it's not straight. Like, I don't know if anybody has any idea why, but. That's happened to me before. Try screenshotting it on your phone and then uploading it again. Like screenshot it, crop it, and do it again. Try. Okay. Okay. Just try. It has happened to me before, though. Okay. So, one other thing. Like, I mean, I'm not new to Beachbody at all. Like, but I'm new to this. Okay. Peace. So, Like, I feel like that's where I'm almost kind of struggling because, like, I'm where I want to be 
I mean, realistically, uh, but so I feel like, I feel like because I'm already there, it's just not relatable. Does that it, make is, sense? it is. So you just, you go back to the beginning. You talk about the beginning. We talk about what, why you signed up as a coach. Why did you sign up as a coach? Because you've done these programs and they work and you feel amazing and you're there and you want to make other people feel the same way you do. You've, you've, you're good girl. You can totally talk about that. that um, okay. Yeah. And use other people's stories. If you have, yeah. a, if you have people that you're helping, that they're seeing results, you can say, because of my expertise and because I've been doing this, I love helping other people look at this girl and the results she's getting because, you know, I set her up with these programs or pretty much all of us as coaches. I mean, you can double check with people if you really don't know them, but like for the most part, we are all okay with you sharing our transformation photos. Um, and like adding them to an album being like, look at these results these girls are getting. Cause like sometimes you don't have crazy results. Like you said, if you're like not necessarily plateaued, but you know, you're just like in shape, like you're not going to see right. a crazy program. So like, feel free to share someone that did just have a crazy transformation. But, um, and like Steph said, like show your very first picture to where you're at now and be able to talk about like remembering what it was like before you started. Type thing. Okay. That makes sense. And it's nice to know that like, you can kind of share other yeah photos also okay thanks yeah. coach coaches are free to share each other's pictures and stories anytime so like know that know that we will share your stories but um coaches are free to share each other's stuff anytime challengers ask their permission okay also never ever 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 copy and paste somebody's posts okay never copy and paste a post always make it your own words um I see somebody saying that they use the hashtag rise and energize cute. Don't totally recommend putting any beach body product names in your post, in your hashtags. They could get spammed. Like it, you'll get your, uh, Instagram, like blacklisted or whitelisted or whatever they call it. Um, also you're going to attract a whole bunch of friggin' beach body coaches. <laughs> they will be all the ones watching your stories and liking your stuff. So, um, I would stay away from any like hashtag 21 day fix hashtag before and after, like those types of things you can use to find posts and find things. But when you're doing hashtags on Instagram, think about what are you searching for? You as a human, not as a coach. If you're on Instagram, what are you looking for? I'm looking for like baby bows or baby moccasins or baby Mary Janes or something like that. Those are the things I look for on Instagram that I can go by. But what are your people looking for? Those are the hashtags you want to put in your post because that means if you're using those hashtags, when people look for those hashtags, they're going to see your post. Might have nothing to do with your post, but someone looking for baby Mary Janes might see me working out with my little baby Abigail in the gym. Know what I mean? So your hashtags should be related to your audience, not to your workout always. Little tip there. All right, we're gonna wrap this up. Anybody have anything else? This is really, really good. This is a real good new coach call. I'm super excited for you guys. The fact that you guys are asking questions and plugging in and like interested means that you guys are invested and you're gonna do the crap and you're gonna see the results. Please know that we are all here for you. No matter if I'm your coach, Taylor's your coach, Wendy's your coach, whoever's your coach, know that you have a whole team of people that'll help you with whatever you need. All right. All right, guys, have a great night. I will be posting in the team page tomorrow about the flash sale and next week about summit. So be watching the team page, check the team page every day and wildflowers. If you guys could stay on, I'll see you guys in a couple minutes. Bye guys. Have a good night. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. <laughs> I haven't heard from you all night. No, so fuck it. My husband, like, unexpectedly, these people, our friends came to our house. I'm like, what the hell? Like, he's like, I didn't know Mike's wife was coming. I'm like, great. <laughs> and, and besides that, no, my husband, and then my mother-in-law, she's been in the hospital, in and out of the hospital for the past two weeks, and she just had surgery done, so she video chatted us, so we wanted to talk to her, so.
Okay, fine. You can yes, totally, totally reason. Well, the first part wasn't re like acceptable, but <laughs> the second part was my mother-in-law. I feel so bad for her. It's all fine. It's all acceptable. I'm gonna nurse my baby while I lay on this bed. Fucking so nurse your baby. I might take I a shot. Nurse, what you the whole freaking bed with me. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Can you say bye bye? Look. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good night night. <laughs> baby. <laughs> Say the night. Bye bye. Um. Okay. Hey. So, things to chat about tonight. The flash sale was the number one thing. I was like, oh, we should talk about the flash sale. Um. Can we make a master list right now? Can someone be in charge of writing it all out in the chat box while we chat? Um. About what we want to include in the flash sale tomorrow. If we can make a master list of what we want to include, I'll make all the graphics and stuff. And if someone else wants to help with like putting the prices together and someone else wants to help with the copy, we can make some of this up. What? Can you keep recording this on the team call? Oh no, we should definitely not. <laughs> <laughs>